Hello guys, welcome to the second part, which is a virtualized automation configuration. In this section, we are going to configure our virtualized automation, which we have done in the previous video, the installation. If you still want to see the installation video, you can find the link in the below description. Let's go ahead. So this is our appliance, which has already been done. So what you can do is you can just type the IP of an appliance without the port number. It will give you a page where you can either go to an appliance page or the configuration page of your VRA. So this is the VMware Virtualize Automation Appliance page. So you can either access to the Virtualize Automation Console or you can go and manage an appliance. So I'm going to go to my Virtualize Automation Console. And in our case, we have not done any pre-configuration of a tenant or something. So we have to first of time log in with the administrator account. That's a vSphere.local account. Okay, so by default, whenever you're creating a tenant, uh, there will be one default tenant will be created called vSphere.local. So I'm just going to use the same tenant and do all my configuration. For right now, we can see that you can do your branding. So if you want to change the image, you can just do all the changes, whatever you want to for the header as well as the footer. Okay, so I'm not going to do all those stuff because this is something which you can just download an image and you can modify according to yourself and do it. So we can also configure here about email server. So you can configure both your email server. So I'm not going to do that as well. I'll do it later on. This is the VRO configuration. Okay, so in our case, we are going to use a default VRO server. So it's not necessary to have it right now. Okay, you can do it later on when it is required VRO. So let's go ahead and do our tenant configuration. So the second job here is to post tenant creation is to create users. So primarily in this case, you have to create two. One is a tenant admin and one is an IS administrator. So you have to create two accounts, which will be a local accounts, which have, which will have an access to the tenant administrator as well as the IS administrator. So let's go ahead and create them. IS admin okay so let it the email id be ias admin at the rate experts.com username ias admin okay password can you provide let's click okay now we'll create a tenant admin okay so Let's click on here. Admin. Um, admin. So we are done with the creating of two accounts. Now it's the time to provide them the access. In the tenant administrator, we will add the tenant user admin, which we have created right now. Let's add our IS administrator here. Okay, once we have done with the providing the access, let's go ahead and click finish and do the other configuration. Okay, so our vSphere local required access has been done. Let's log out and go back to the login page now we'll log in as ias admin so each account the the two accounts have a different different features with them so they have different different role so in case of is admin we have a role where we can add an endpoint we can create fabric groups so it's a certain kind of a role which has been provided to them it's the same case. Let's let me log into let me log in as tenant admin as well. Okay. 
okay so let me log into this yeah so uh, we are going to log in here with our different account tenant admin te named admin okay so in in this case if you let's compare both of them okay so one is logged in as an is admin whereas other is logged in as a tenant admin and you can see if you go to the infrastructure in the in this case i can just see the recent events but in this case i have an endpoint administration and monitoring and it does not have anything called administration whereas the tenant has an access to do an administration job okay now we will go ahead and to the next configuration let's go and add an endpoint okay so endpoint is nothing but your access to your vSphere kvm hyper-v or storage or whatsoever it is okay so we are going to create a connection between our vSphere and the vra Okay, HTTPS, so let's give 192. dot sdk So we have to follow that standard format, okay? Now I'll give the credentials. So we don't have any credentials, so I'm creating a new one. So it will be Anupam's credentials. Let's get the password. Okay. We'll use this credential. Now specify the manager for the network security platform. We don't have to do this. We are just doing a simple. Let's click on OK. Let's wait for it. So once you do this configuration, the next job is to go to monitoring logs and see do we have any kind of a log which says like this exception card not able to talk so my last communication was at 615 and it's now 617 let me refresh it and see if i still have that logs if i still have that logs means i don't have a proper communication between them so you can see it's log like two minutes now and i don't have any logs saying that i have a problem so that means our endpoint configuration is done perfectly fine okay now the next job is to create fabric group so before i go ahead to create a fabric group i want to go to virilize in tenant admin i want to add my active directory okay so i'll go to directories add directory add active directory okay and active directory over and okay so I, i'm going to choose this active directory integrated windows authentication so directory name it will be experts okay connector now this directory is across all the connection tools now i'm not going to check this i'm going to give the domain name experts.com domain username amu pap give the password Now, this is something uh, bin user you pin. So you have to give it something like this, okay? So it will be like ANU PAP at the rate experts.com, okay? Now let's give the password again. So 
save and next. So guys, uh, while doing the save, I think something went wrong. So I need to re-log into my browser. But this uh, expert.com was still there. Uh, once I click next here, and after this only something went wrong. So I need to again log off from my browser and re-log in. And once I did the re-login, I'm trying to like troubleshoot, but it's like, again, there is one basic configuration which was missing. It's like to, uh, to define the path where all you can find your user for VRA and the groups for VRA. So I've just defined after logging in, which you can do it in the previous, like the first time configuration itself. Okay. Administration, directory, directories, expert.com, okay. Now, sync setting, identity provided, okay. Setting, So we'll go to groups, we'll add a group. So we'll go to an AD server. Let's run dsa.msc. And we will go to properties, attribute editor. And we are going to copy complete stuff. Copy and add. Okay, find groups, select all 24, okay, select plus, um, properties, attribute editor, copy, find groups, Select all, take it, save and sync. Okay. Sync directories. So this is done. So sync is running. So we need to wait for it. And again, we are going to go to sync setting, users, okay? So we are going to provide all the users. So plus one more will provide, that is plain text. This will be users, okay? Save and sync. Okay, so it's going to sync all the users, whatever is there uh, related to Active Directory. So as of now, we don't have to do here much. Uh, let's jump back to our account of IAS Admin. IAS Admin, okay. So in IAS Admin, we just now did of creating an endpoint. We'll see the endpoint. Okay, all looks good. We'll go to fabric group. You can actually see a wizard here. So it says my goal. So it, it would say that add an endpoint, then it will say we need to add a, uh, or configure a fabric group. So I'm going to create a fabric group now. So the fabric group name will be fabric group FG. Okay. And let's let's give our entire cloud solution a name. Let it be
air bond okay so who is the fabric administrator f a b r i fabric admin and i'm going to give my name anupam okay so these two are the administrator to the fabric admin so i'll create one cluster or a resource group who is going to own this okay so let's click on okay now fabric administrator is the owner of the fabric which is a data link cluster right under my vcenter server if you see my vcenter server you can actually see a data link cluster which is having my esx and all the things and this fabric admin is the owner of it now our next job is to log in into the fabric administrator okay so let me see if i can okay let me go ahead and copy the url i'm not sure that can i log in multiple accounts like this paste and go no i can't so i need to log off i need to log out from my tenant admin let me log off from my tenant admin okay so here am i i'm going to log out my tenant admin as of now we have to again go back and do certain jobs there but okay so uh, my id if you remember fabric admin i have an access to fabric admin so my admin is of experts.com and this is domain is vspare.local so i have to go to change to a different domain experts.com perfect so let me see what level of access i'm having so i'm just having if i go to infrastructure i can just see i have an option to do some kind of a reservation computer resource and administration and if i go to administration i can only define property definition or property group okay nothing much to it so my next job after creating a fabric group is to create reservations okay so i'm going to create my first reservation So click new. I'm going to create a vSphere reservation. So this is the point where actually you check is my VRA, IS server or all the components are talking properly to my vCenter or are they functioning in a proper normal way. So let's give a name. So uh, this is uh, RE reserve air bond. Okay so there isn't a business group right so i'm sorry i think we need to create a business group ahead of this i'm really sorry for that so that's why that's why we need a tenant admin still okay let's change the domain vspay.local next de amount admin Administration, users and group, business group. Okay, so I'm going. I'm creating a new business group. Okay, the business group is called Airborne. Business group BG Airborne. Okay, so you can just give a description if you want to. I'm not giving it right now. I'm going to write an email ID, BG Air bond bg dot airborne at experts dot com okay i have not created any active directory policy so it does not have anything there is no custom property as of now let's click on next so who is going to be group admin for this okay so first of all i'm going to create my name who is going to be a group manager and I'll create um, M A N A till no G R O U P. I have already created one uh, mm, role. Okay, so it is called B U S I B G admin. Okay, 
So BG admin is a group which has a which will be part of the group manager role. So there is something called support as well. So I have added support. So there is something called user as well. Okay. BG user. Okay. So all the groups has been created and we have given the access. Let's go next. So I've not created any uh, default machine prefix. I'll be creating in the next down the line videos. So I'm not going to do it right now. So let's click on finish. So our business group is created. Okay, so um, we have to come here later on. I'm just I'm just looking for one property. Mm. Okay, uh, we'll come here back again. So let's log out. Log in with my ID. Okay, change to a different domain. Exports.com. If you guys remember last time when I logged in, I was having very limited access and I was not having this catalog items request. Why this got populated? Because now I'm a part of a business group and I'm the owner of that business group. So I have got all those options populated now. So still my job is the same. I'll go here, create one reservation. Okay. New e center. I'll give uh, R E V Air P O U N D Air Bond. Okay. Now I, I'll see my business group called Air Bond. I'll give priority as one reservation. Enable this reservation. Okay. Now this is the place where we will come to know that everything is in sync. Once we select the data center, my uh, machine quota and all those sh should populate, but it's not populating for me. So definitely there is something wrong out here. So in this case, what I need to do is, I need to actually sync my all the stuff, okay? So I need to go to compute resource. Let me see if I can see. Okay, now I can see everything is zero zero. It need to be sync. Okay, data collection on request now. Request now. I think I think there is something wrong with it. I have to look into it. Okay, uh, maybe uh, let me go to my IS server. Where is my IS server? I think there is one configuration which I need to look forward to it. So sometimes this problem comes, but uh, it's not in all the cases. I have noticed in my case. Uh, administrative tool. I'll go to component services. Computers, distributed, local PC. I'll go to the properties of this. Security, uh, no authentication required. Okay, yes. Okay, has been restarted. So let me try to. So actually the sync takes almost like 15 to 20 minutes. It does not happen so instantly. So let's, I'll request you guys to wait for like 15, 20 minutes. Even I'm going to wait for 15, 20 minutes. So let's wait and I will pause this video for a while and I'll come back once everything is done. Okay. Hello guys. So after a while I can just see these things up. Okay. Moreover, you can see see there was some database errors as well populating 
uh, when we were last seeing this console. So after doing that configuration, my following error went off. So it's like almost three minutes after resolving that issue, the following errors have gone. Now I can see everything. Now we can go to my reservation, reservations. Click new, we center reservation. I'll give REV, REV, and it will be about, okay. We have the business group ready. Priority as one. We'll go to resources. We'll click on resource data link, and you can see everything got populated, right? So I'm going to create a reservation for the data store let it be 100 GB okay priority as priority as one okay again I'm going to select this the remote data store uh, 100 GB and priority as two okay and even I can use the local storage priority as three okay so I'll make it as 500 okay priority as three okay I got everything I'm not uh, using any resource pool means I'm having resource pool but I'm not I don't want to use a resource pool let's go on network all should live to the VM network no properties no alerts as of now okay so if you want to have a capacity alert yes you can have so you can give it to Anupam AP, AP at the rate experts.com okay okay so everything is all set let's click on okay so our reservation is also done so uh, once the reservation is done we are going back to our I will log off from this. Let's log out from this. Okay. And we are going to log into our tenant admin back. Go back. We'll go to administration users and groups okay and custom group so in this we are going to assign certain roles so there are different type of role like application architect approval administrator catalog administrator container so there are different kind of roles okay so we have to assign those kind of roles to specific sets of users so that they can perform special tasks in my case, I'm going to give all the access to my ID so that I can show you for creating a blueprint and other stuff, okay? So it's like, well, access, fair, bond, okay? Next members and open. Okay, I'll click on finish. Done. Now, here was my ID. Let me refresh my ID and see. So, once I refresh, you can see I get an option of called design, right? So this is the place where I'm going to actually host everything. So before I go ahead, I will go to administration page. My next job is to catalog management. So before I create entitlement, I have to create entitlement. But first of all, let's go ahead and create a blueprint. Click new. In my case, I'm going to create a Windows Server 2012. 
okay windows server r r2 okay let's give a description this is image for windows server 2012 r2 without any patch or a software okay archival days let it be one so deployment limit be two okay least minimum days will be one maximum days will be 30 in my case so you can put according to your organization requirements if you have nsx configured you can even provide those information click on okay so once you click OK, you can see a page opens up where you can do your customization, the blueprint customization. So now we'll drag and drop our vSphere machine. Just to let you know, if you want to deploy one instance, so it will be in a single type. So at the time you can do multiple, like two, you can see the tab like that. So there's a change. So in my case, I'm just making it one. Give it an ID. Hmm windows here we can't give a space okay server 2012 r2 okay you can give a description i'm not giving anything else there is no reservation policy i told you already there is no machine prefix policies here so build information so i am building this image from a linked clone okay let's select the clone so I have a Windows Server 2012 R2 template. Okay, so I have a snapshot image. So you have to take a snapshot of your VM uh, once it is in a particular state so that your base OS and the snapshot combines and create an image out of it. Okay, the customization specification is nothing but your one of the answers here. Okay, so if you have anything, you can specify here. If not, you can leave it blank. In my case, I'm just leaving it blank. I'll go to machine resources. Maximum CPU can be allocated to that which particular VM is two CPUs, maximum 4 GB RAM. This is the default size. Storage, by default, if you want to add an external hard disk, you can give it. So network, if you have any external network configuration, so these all are empty because you have not done any configurations to it. Now, we will click on finish. So once we click on finish, uh, just hold on guys, I'm getting on call. Hello. Yeah, I'll take a cab, sir. Thank you. So let's go back. So once it is done, it does, it's, if you can see the status as a draft, we have to click on publish. So publish does not mean that our item has been published to a cloud service or something like that we have to link it okay for linking we'll go to administration page catalog items okay we'll collect select this and we can see it's already activated okay now action Just a second, guys. Just a second. I think I'm not sure. Like I have sufficient access to. Okay. So let me do one thing. Mm. Let me log in as. Okay. Catalog management services. Okay. So I'm as a tenant admin now. You can see I have an access. So I was just looking for, for it. I'm not a tenant admin. I have that role, so I can't do that. Okay. Now this is the catalog element. Its status says as active. So you have to make sure that it is set to active. You can give an icon if you have some icons in your system, then you can give an icon to it. Right now I'm not giving it. So we have to we have to give uh, at this place in it entitlements you can see what all entitlements are there 
link to this particular image okay or catalog item so we don't have any as of now let's create a new entitlement and before I create an entitlement I want to go and create a service first okay new service what's the service name it bond sales okay if you have an image you can simply put an icon to it I'm not sure that do I have any of them here but let me give a try if I have anything no I don't think so nope let me create one small paint image and let me make it Okay, so let it be 16. Let it go to the center a little bit. Okay, and let's make it okay. It should be okay. Now let me save it to my desktop. done so here is my airborne image active so here you can specify like this service is available for how much to how much are who is the owner I'm not specifying it because if I specify only those that will be the owner but in my case I'm going to link it with my business group so that my business group will be the owner of it okay okay now entitlements new we will give as in t a i r b o b o n d so you can give description i if you want to uh, give an end date of an expiration of this entitlement you can provide that but it's fine i don't want that will be active it's airborne so uh, if you see i'm not giving it's all the users and groups so it means whatever the part of this business group are the part of this entitlement okay let's get, click on this next so now there are multiple entitlement service in my case I have only one service which we have created right now click OK entitled element so I have Windows Server which we built right now okay so there will be only one service there action so you can provide certain kind of access to perform in my case as of now since it's a lab I'm going to click all click OK and finish the time I click on finish you can see the status as active we will go to the other browser and we'll go to catalog item and we can see the item as empty why the item is empty then there's something is missing okay let's go back and let me remind remember if I have missed out something so perfect my services are active manage catalog item add catalog item okay so there was no catalog item added to it okay close okay let me go here and, and see if I still get anything yes so my catalog item was empty that's why I can't see so you have seen we have just created a from we went to a design and we have created a blueprint after blueprint we have gone to our tenant admin and we have configured all our services entitlements okay 
and then finally in the services we have uh, managed our catalog so we have clicked on this manage catalog item we have added a catalog item to it so the time we added we saw our catalog item here now you can request for building a VM so for example I'll give a description not required request reason not required we'll go to properties not required we'll select that particular server which want to get deployed so instance one okay number of CPU two let the RAM be 4 GB 96 okay storage let the storage be 40 GB I'm not requesting for anything else it was just a demo one and you can give a description click on submit so requests and I think this time we would be successful Come on, boy, you're gonna have to. Execution information. Are you maths? So, this was a request too. So, so this is request three. So, this was success, and it's waiting now. So I think we have to wait a little and then the VM should start building now. I hope so because the first one it shows a success. So in progress still. It will come let's wait for a little more longer time and see the status yes you can see the cloning of the virtual machine has started and it has come so it's working here right and you can see the name which it has given as bg airborne 001 so the business group name okay so here is our this here is our server bg airborne 001 so we can go ahead power on the server and we can do all the other stuff so this is just an overview of a video okay okay let me again before i wrap it up let me see let me see the execution information it still says us in progress so let me wrap it up so you might remember how we started we deployed an appliance after that we have gone through a wizard the wizard actually do all the prerequisite configuration in the is servers in the windows box once that is done, we logged into our server as an administrator. Later on, we created two IDs, tenant admin as well as an IS admin. We logged in as a tenant admin and we performed certain tasks. Uh, whereas in um, IS admin, we added as endpoints and everything. Okay, so in tenant admin, we have added our domain and we have done all the configurations here later on we have even created services and entitlement here so in the fabric admin we have created our the fabric admin was having the uh, features to create reservation so we have created reservations here then we have created blueprint after blueprint we have gone again to administration of 
interested in that man okay we have created services entitlements and we have publishes published the catalog item to the services and then we finally got all the element under this catalog okay under this catalog we got our component the similar way you can take a snapshot we can uh, install a database and other stuff and you can make your complete catalog stock so this is a basic overview guys i'm going to make maybe a third part of this video where i'm going to explain the policies configurations minor configurations a small small configuration sort of it and i will try my best so that i can go to a fourth section which is the orchestrator part i'll try to give you a demo of an orchestrator but how exactly the orchestrator is working let's wrap up this video don't forget to subscribe and like the video and give your comments for any suggestions and we will meet you in the next video thank you guys